Ellinger. And you know what's crazy about Sam Ellinger is I had this preconceived notion of what Sam Ellinger was coming into this process. And I thought I had it all figured out. And I'd watched him a ton at Texas. But, you know, he's grown so much as a quarterback since his freshman year back in 2017 to now in 2020. He's one of the few guys in this draft that has a ton of starts under his belt. And so that's going to help him when you go to the evaluation process. There's a ton of tape that you can comb through, a lot of things that you can take a look at and say, hey, he's grown here. There's growth here. There, there's still some areas where there's room for more growth, but uh, I think the experience really has helped Sam Ellinger. And um, he's one of the guys that's moved way up on my list as he comes in at number seven. I want to take a look at Sam Ellinger's um, QB card as we flip this thing over, we take a look at his strengths quickly. Um, he's got an adequate arm. It's not going to blow you away, but it's a good enough arm. It's above average. He can make all the throws on the football field. Um, his athleticism is something that jumps out at you. Sam Ellinger can run. He can move. He's not a slouch back there. When things break down, he is able to make things happen with his legs. His athleticism plays a major part in why he's going to be intriguing uh, in the mid portion of this draft, uh, physical, uh, he's physic he's got some physicality and uh, toughness. And so uh, it says physically, but it's physicality and toughness. Uh, this is a guy that to me uh, was like a pseudo running back at times. And you see that with guys like Trey Lance that play in those kind of spread offenses uh, where, where there's a lot of uh, zone read and a lot of uh, read options and things of that nature. And with him, you even get a speed option every now and again. Uh, but he, he runs it a ton. And so there's physicality there. He's he's a physical guy. There's a, a level of toughness there that you love with uh, Sam Ellinger. And so that's something else that he brings to the table. Uh, he processes and then progresses. I call it PMP, uh, process and progress. You've got to be able to see the football field and then digest what is happening and then be able to progress through your reads. A lot of these quarterbacks, they come in, um, they, they are either a single, um, a single read, they, they, they predetermine where they're going with the football, or they're a half-field read guy. And that's okay. If you dissect what the defense is in pre-snap, and you're reading half of the field, and you know what half of the field to work, and you got the matchup you like, go after it. Go for it. But... When things don't happen the way that you think they should, you, you practice against this defense in practice, and it, it doesn't go that way, and that first read isn't there. you got to be able to process what the defense is in, what they're doing, and get through your reads quickly and find the open guy. He can do that, and you saw him be able to do that as time progressed at his, uh, in his career at Texas. I manipulation and anticipation, one of my favorite plays from Sam Ellinger, and I'm going to put this clip up at some point, it is a throw against TCU where he absolutely manipulates the safety with his eyes, takes the safety away, knows exactly where he wants to go. He's staring backside, backside, then turns front side and throws a laser to his receiver for the touchdown. It's a gorgeous throw. Um, he also does a really good job of anticipating there's a throw uh, against Texas Tech, back of the end zone. Uh, his guy's running a, a, a bang eight on the front side of that play, and he puts it right on the money before that uh, receiver comes out of his break, before that defender even has a chance to turn around. Football's already on the receiver for a touchdown, um, so he does a really good job with eye manipulation and anticipation. Pocket poise. Uh, I was really impressed with his ability to just manipulate the pocket. You know, you, you got to be able to negotiate the pocket as a quarterback. You can't always be ready to run when things break down or be ready to run if the pocket is crumbling around you. Can you work from a dirty pocket? He can. He doesn't panic. And so uh, that's something else I love with Sam Ellinger. He's a playmaker. He can make plays with his feet, as we saw many a times at Texas, but he also can do it with his arm. He looks to extend to throw the football. His first inclination isn't to just vacate the pocket and run. He's looking to make a play with his arm, and he can. 
He's not always the most accurate in doing so. We'll talk about that here in a second. But he can make plays with both his feet and his arm. He can extend plays and make things happen. And that those are the guys that are the most successful in the NFL, the guys that can extend plays with their um, legs but still look to throw the football when they do extend the play. And then he's got starting experience, something that a lot of these quarterbacks in this year's draft class really don't have. We don't have a bunch of guys with 30 or 40 starts. A lot of these guys have 20 or 16 starts or 11 starts, a, a really small, you know, COVID-19 kind of threw a wrench in a, and a lot of these guys is plans to have 24 starts or to have 27 or to have 30 starts, but uh, he's got 43. So he's got plenty of starting experience under his belt as well. Um, his weaknesses, um, his height. He's not a big guy. You, you look at him, they had him listed at Texas at 6'3". He's probably more like 6'1", 6'1 and a half. He's not, I don't even think he's 6'2". Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't kill him for it. I don't knock him for it because he makes up for the lack of height with some of his other intangibles. Uh, inconsistent accuracy. Mainly, he's inconsistent when his feet aren't set. And I know you say to yourself, well, duh, when a quarterback's feet aren't set, it's much easier for them to be inaccurate. But that's what separates the elite guys from the guys that aren't elite, is that a guy like Zach Wilson can throw from any platform. His feet don't have to be set. Hell, his feet don't even have to be on the ground, and he can make an accurate throw. That's not the case with Sam Ellinger. He has to have a firm base a lot of times, or... If he's in the pocket and he's moving, that's when he's inaccurate. When he's outside the pocket, sometimes his feet aren't set, obviously, when you're moving outside the pocket, but he can still make an accurate throw. So I think that his inconsistency a lot of times comes from within the pocket when he's moving around and his feet don't get set. Uh, we'll take unnecessary risks and sacks. You'll see sometimes where he tries to fit a ball in there, and there's some times where he gets away with it. He's got a little bit of a gunslinger mentality. There's some times where he gets away with a few throws. You say, you shouldn't have done that. And then there's some times where you go, man, you got away with one. And then there's sacks that you see him take, and you say, come on, Sam, you can't take that sack. This this particular situation, you're, or, or you're in the red zone. I'm watching him against TCU. He's in the red zone and he extends the play, and he's about to get hit, and he tries to force it on a, on a second down throw, and I'm like, dude, that almost got picked off. You're in the red zone. You're guaranteed a field goal opportunity if nothing else happens. You can't do that. So he, some of those plays he's got to eliminate. And then uh, this is one of the biggest knocks for Texas fans. He just didn't win a lot of big games, and, and there's something to be said about finding a way to elevate your team in some of the biggest games. In his career, he was one and four against um, Oklahoma in, in that big game that they play every single year, um, the Red River Shootout. Um, he lost to LSU in 2019 in a game that they definitely could have won and was up early in that ball game in a shootout. Um, lost to um, Iowa State this year. Just anytime they've played teams that were ranked big games, it seems like he always ends up on the short end of things. But at the end of the day, I'm very intrigued by Sam Ellinger. I think he can play at the next level. I look at him as a late day um, two, early day three pick. So for me, what I'm telling you is I'd spend a late third on Sam Ellinger. I'd spend an early fourth on Sam Ellinger. I think the talent is there. I think his skill set translates to today's NFL very well. Um, and my comp for him is Mitchell Trubisky. And I know some of you are saying, well, you, you guys have to get out of the habit of thinking about these quarterbacks in, in the vein of Mitchell Trubisky stinks. So Sam Elliger stinks. Well, Mitchell Trubisky was drafted second overall because he had talent coming into the NFL. Mitchell could run. Mitchell could throw it. Mitchell could do a lot of things that intrigued the Chicago Bears. All right. And, and Mitchell Trubisky is a talented quarterback. I believe in Mitchell Trubisky. I told you that I think he can play in this league. I think that there were some disservices done to Mitchell in Chicago, but that's another discussion for another day. At the end of the day, Mitchell Trubisky was talented enough to be drafted second overall. Sam Ellinger has a similar skill set. He's not as big as Mitchell Trubisky. I think Mitchell's more along the 6'3", um, um, you know, size in terms of his height. But 
Um, in terms of weight and, and, and his physicality, I think he's got a lot of the similar skill sets of a Mitchell Trubisky. And I think he plays with a little bit more of a sense of urgency than that of Mitchell Trubisky. He's willing to put his body on the line. Mitchell Trubisky at times makes some business decisions. Uh, I really think Sam Ellinger has what it takes to potentially be uh, a middle-of-the-pack NFL starter. I think this is a guy you can draft, and in a year or two, he's in there taking meaningful snaps, and you may feel like you found a guy that can get you to the postseason. You know, um, I, I think you can do that with a Sam Ellinger. So um, I, I'm going to stop my um, rankings quickly. I did have a super chat. This one is from my man, Al, Aldine Adkins, double A. Greatly appreciate you. Double A says, I'm a, I'll, I draft Sam Slinger. Uh, as my tight end three, Skull, love you. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it's funny because at, there was a point in time where I thought he would be just like Tyrone Swoops, you know, out of Texas. Another one of these guys, it's big, it's physical. He, he wasn't as big as Tyrone Swoops. I think he was more along the lines of like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, whatever the case may be. But, you know, they ran it a ton with him, especially when they got in the red zone. And I said, okay, I see where this is going. He's going to be another one of these running quarterbacks. But... He really developed over his, you know, the life of his career at Texas. And um, uh, I really like Sam Ellinger. I think he's going to be a lot better than a lot of you think. Louis T.